you know, I always find it interesting um, when our clients message me asking me about how we approach a sale. You know, I had somebody say, they said, Anthony, you said you'd over 100 videos of horses. You know, how do you whittle that down? Well, obviously, on site, we have to look at every horse on that list. And in fact, we'll look at probably over two, two or 300 horses between now and the end of the sale. What we are looking for isn't necessarily to walk up to that horse and fall in love with that horse. We'll make special note of horses that catch our eye. A horse that I like or Amy likes or any horses that I find interesting we'll make special note of. But really what I'm trying to do is assess that horse and put a price beside that horse. This is what I think hip number whatever is worth. And um, I always find it interesting the questions we get this time of year because the approach that we have towards any sale is not the same approach that other trainers will have. Other trainers will look through the Lexington catalog and make a list of 20, 25 horses. And those are their 25 or whatever, or 10 or whatever they want to look at. Not us. I want to look at hundreds of horses, price them all, and then if any of those horses fall below, or much below that level, then that's a horse we can look at. Now this year, obviously we have a budget to go to Lexington with. Thank you to everybody that's participated in the partnerships thus far. It's been a, a great success in the Ohio partnership. Uh, we saw what kind of success it was actually when uh, Wendy unlocked the shares from Ohio and people started buying and selling them. People getting shares they wanted, moving shares that maybe they didn't want. It, it all worked out exactly how I hoped it would, um, which only made it a better experience overall. Now heading into Lexington, it's, a, it's obviously a, a different animal altogether. We're talking about multiple jurisdictions, multiple sires. Everything is different here than it was in, in Ohio. The setup is still the same, but we had the, the two partnerships, one for 200,000, one for 50,000. The reason being, is we want to let everybody in from the start. For the people that were really concerned, they wanted to be able to buy a horse now, not in four days or whenever it gets opened up, but right now, we want to allow people to be part of that. So that's how those partnerships were born. And as we, as I said, when we went to Lexington, we do have a budget to work with, and I want to fit the proper pieces in. So if I'm going through day, you're not going to find a ton of bargains on day one. Although we did find bomb hugger. Uh, it's funny because I like number five on day one and could be attainable bomb hugger Yeah, bomb hugger was number five on day one last year. So um, It's not to say we can't buy horses on day one. It's just It's like going up to the plate and thinking you can hit a home run. You might but Probably not and that's and that's how it kind of is with with day one in Lexington This is when everybody gets dressed up and everybody wants to go and it, it's big to be honest, in lack of better words, in a lot of cases, it's a big pissing contest between a lot of people, and you're not going to find a lot of, you know, a lot of value on day one. But if you're patient, like we are going to be, and watch every horse go through the ring and assess and price every horse before it goes in the ring, then you're at least prepared, right? And you know, the definition of luck is when preparation meets opportunity. Well, maybe we will get lucky on day one. Who knows? We'll see. So that is how we approach the sale. And, and that price, that number, is built from uh, confirmation, reading, but mostly the individual themselves, right? How does that particular filly or colt look? Right? How does their head look? How does their mannerisms, do they, do they look athletic? You can see some of this in the video. You can see some of the, obviously, you can see the pedigree on the page. But you can't see the horse until it's standing in front of you, and that is why it's important to be down here today. So, uh, some of the things that was wonderful. Some people said, you know, why why were you saying that Father Patrick's may be discounted? Well, I can hear how some of the other trainers are talking about the Father Patrick's. Maybe they had let them down, but that goes back to expectations. Also, I know we've only had a couple, and I wasn't let down by them. They weren't extraordinary, but they weren't bad. I thought they were okay. And when I look at the Father Patrick's, the reason, this is very important. When I looked at all the videos, most of them look the same. They kind of got that lazy way of kind of flopping their front end over. They don't look extraordinarily talented. Some of them, that doesn't mean that they aren't. But there are some outliers. There are some horses where you look at them and say, that horse doesn't look like a, a, a typical Father Patrick. 
And coincidentally enough, some of those horses are the Father Patricks that have found their way onto our list. Then you look at Southwind Frank, even at Glare AM, who's incredibly talented, and a number of other good Southwind Franks, they interfere behind, they end up hitting the shins. So we're not looking for the ones that are short in the barrel, look for the longer ones. The longer, the better. That's what we're looking for with the, with the Southwind Franks. And I like Southwind Franks, but some of them have been disappointing. It's gonna be very difficult to believe we're gonna get anywhere near a Walner or a Tactical Landing. That's not gonna happen. Now last year we saw Cantab Hall slide down the list. Amy loves Cantab Hall. Don't. <laughs> Amy doesn't like Cantab Halls. She just had bad luck with some of them, but I like Cantab which Hall. One, which Cantab Hall have you had this year? Stonebridge Dolce. What? We've had Cantab Halls. Ooh, maybe, I don't wanna talk about it. I'm not talking, he's been an exceptional sire for a long time. So to even remotely try and run him down would be unfair and unrealistic and uninformed, to be fair. Here, go on in this book, look up Cantab Hall, I'm sure they'll give you a nice little write-up about him, how good his prodigy progeny has been. Uh, so Cantab Halls were obviously discounted last year. That was that was obvious. I didn't see that coming, but they were. Right? So there are sires out there. You know, when you when we how do I look at a sale, I'm looking at Pedigree plus confirmation plus placement for sale, uh, the, the breeding firm where the horse came from, the sire itself, how the sale is going for those sires, that may change my price as we come into the sale. So a horse that I might look at a catalog and look at a video and say, geez, that looks like a $30,000 horse. By the time you're looking at placement and sale, uh, and the reason I said firm was, the bigger firms have a lot of clients. Like Hanover Shoe Farms has a lot of clients, and a lot, a big clientele list. So those horses will always stay pretty strong. Some of them, some of them won't. And what you'll see happen in the sales also is that a horse, and I saw this in Ohio, you'll see this in every sale. You know, you guys left that, uh, what's that, Magic, Magic Palm? Nobody, there's still half of them available from Ohio. This is a horse that I priced three times as high, but what happens is those horses will go in the ring, People will look at that horse and say, oh, that was a nice looking horse. And then nobody starts bidding on it. And immediately what happens is human nature kicks in and people say, I must have missed something. I believe this is how we got bomb hunger. One, she was small, she was on day one, but she should have went for more money than that. People, and they'll second guess themselves. And this is why you have to be prepared. You'll have people that'll say, oh, I must have missed something. I, what's going on with this horse? I thought this horse would bring more. And then they literally talk themselves out of bidding all in one second. And that is how some of those horses fall through the cracks. Lawmaker was a twenty thousand dollar yearling. Who's some other ones? Brazilian style was private, I believe. Tiger, Tiger was twenty thousand dollars also. Eglarium was twenty one thousand dollars, I believe. Uh, who did we raise this year? Sweet on Peak was eighteen thousand dollars. Kemp was Kemp was seventeen thousand. I took pictures of Unbeatable Kemp on day one about how beautiful he was from a distance. I could see he was a gorgeous animal. And I literally took pictures of him saying, look at this thing. These Walners look great. Lo and behold, I had them priced at like 45 or 50. We got them for 17. And this happens in the sale. You have to be prepared when the horses go in the ring because things get missed. That's where we do our best work is where things get missed because at the sale, I believe I am prepared to buy any horse if it goes for the right amount of money. So. As I was saying, some of those breeding firms have longer clientele lists. They run stronger, right? Hunterton, Concord, Hanover. Some of these sale comp sale firms, they're stronger, right? And you get a little, you'll see uh, consigned by Hunterton or Preferred or anybody from a very smaller, a smaller operation. They don't have the same exposure. For a guy like Dave Reed, if he can't get all the exposure he needs on that horse, it could go for a lot less than it should. Then it, maybe it's one of the first horses in the ring on a day, or the last horse in the ring in a day, or maybe it just got bad luck. And, it, and the, what happens is there seems to be a lull in some of the sales where 10 or 15 or 20 hips, you just, where is everybody? The horses just don't seem to be going as strong, and then all of a sudden, boom, they just take off again. It's weird, but that is how sales work. So you have to be prepared to take all this information in at one time. Where's the horse coming from? Where is it at the sale? Who's it by? What's the confirmation look like? 
All these things have to equate to a number. And if we can pick our horses up for less than that number, that real time number, then we do. And that's how I approach a sale and that's how we buy our horses. So for those of you out there saying, well, I like this horse and I like this horse, I like them all, all of them. I'll tell you who we like the most and what I think they're worth. And that'll come down to the videos we're about to make you over the next two days. But I would hope, if you do see the videos, understand this. I'm going to do everything I can to make sure our partnerships are full. So if you want to participate in Lexington, the easiest way to do it, and you're available. If you buy a partnership, in the, if you buy into one of the, the $50,000 partnership for $500, you can buy any of those horses. You're available before anybody else to buy into any of those horses. How do you make them? He breaks, I breaks, that's kind of how it works. I'm going to back off to Chevron's, and everybody will be happy. Anyway, um, that's how we work at the sale, that's what we're going to do, and I, and I hope everybody participates. It does make, listen, it makes my job easier. When I went to Ohio and all those lots were sold, I could just do my job. I didn't have to worry about who I have to call after this horse sells to see if we can get all these shares sold out. It did, it did make my job easier. So, that is how we approach sales. That is what I'm trying to do. That is what I'm hoping you'll allow me to do. But that is all up to you. So you asked how I look at sales. Most of you knew, but some of you didn't. And hopefully I've articulated it in a proper way. We will have a number of videos coming to you. We're at the sale in 17 minutes. Uh, you're in a different area, honey. It could be raining here, it might be raining there, who knows. 17 minutes we'll be at the sales pavilion. We're gonna try and look at some horses, bring you some, some videos, and talk to you all very soon.